In this video, I'll be going over a Ballistic Shield build gear for PvP in the Dark Zone. It is something I had put together in the last few weeks of patch 1.4, but with 1.5 on the horizon, I decided to wait to see if there's going to be any changes. As it turns out, there weren't any significant changes to the build except for the replacement pieces of 229 to 256. So let's begin. The main gear set I'm using is the Sentry's Call. It has a 4 piece bonus that allows me to apply Sentry Marks to my target. Each mark gives me 5% extra damage for a duration of 30 seconds, and each target can receive up to 3 marks. In PvP, Sentry Marks can serve multiple purposes in addition to providing extra damage for your team. They can be used as indicators for who you, as a Sentry player, want to kill. A good team should automatically see Sentry Marks on enemy players as the main target to be focused on, allowing you to take down your enemy team one by one. The next important piece of gear I am using is the Resourceful Backpack. The Resourceful Backpack allows me to heal all of my skill objects, including the Ballistic Shield, simply by healing myself through any method such as medkits, first aid self-heal, recovery link, etc. It can even heal the Ballistic Shield when it's taking damage, which is kind of weird, but I'll talk about that a little bit later. The last piece of gear ties everything up together it is the decisive gloves and these are decisive gloves rolled with critical hit chance, critical hit damage, and pistol damage. The decisive talent gives you 35% extra damage when you're landing headshots through the sidearm and since you are running a sentry shield build you will be aiming for headshots to apply sentry marks on your target and you will be doing it with a sidearm. Now onto the weapon. I personally like to use the first wave x45 but this is completely debatable. I've had talks with other people that run shield builds and they prefer to use other sidearms such as the 91011 because it does more damage per bullet and has a slower firing rate. But my reasons for choosing the first wave X45 is simply because I see my role in a group as support. I'm there to quickly mark my targets, apply some status effects, and run interference so my shield is taking the damage instead of my team. The first wave X45 is perfect for this because of its insane firing rate of 625, which is up there with the automatic weapons and its native 15 round magazine size. The weapon talents I'm running on this first wave X45 are Expert and Harmful. Expert allows you to deal 100% more damage when the target is less than 30% health, and Harmful gives you a 15% chance to apply a bleed effect to your target. Some people like to run Intense and Harmful, but the high electronics requirement for Intense takes away from your ability to run something like Higher Stamina. As for gun mods, an extended magazine with at least 100% magazine size is a must. And for everything else, just try to run Headshot Damage, Critical Hit Chance, and Critical Hit Damage in that order of importance. For stats, the Shield build does not need as much stamina as a typical PvP build due to having extra toughness from the Shield. This freedom allows you to spec more into firearms and electronics, which are both fairly important. For firearms, you should at least spec enough to unlock the harmful talent on the pistol. And electronics, I just dedicate my mass to run a main role of electronics with a uh, major attribute of skill power. And that seems to be enough to run the Ballistic Shield build properly. I haven't optimized my build completely because I'm running with one piece more role for firearms than I'd like. Um, sometime in the future, I like to replace one of these firearm pieces with a stamina roll piece just to have a little bit more toughness. For gear mods, I am running all stamina gear mods rolled with armor. You can use the gear mods to tweak the balance between stamina, firearms, or electronics, but they all must be rolled with armor to get that high toughness. As for performance mods, I am running all ballistic shield damage resilience mods on the knee pads, backpack, and holster. The largest one I've been able to find was from the Dark Zone, and it is giving me 5% Ballistic Shield Damage Resilience. And if you can find 4 of these, you can stack up to 20% extra damage resilience on your Ballistic Shield. Let's look at the abilities. I'm running the First Aid Self Heal with the Overdose mod, and I'm also running the Ballistic Shield with the Kinetic Breaker mod. The Kinetic Shield is different because it grants a small portion of the incoming damage as healing. Like I mentioned earlier, you can use this with the resourceful backpack and incoming damage will heal you and then a small portion of that will heal the shield back. This makes you extremely tanky and allows you to do stuff like eat grenades or absorb lots of NPC damage. The assault shield is also a good choice if you like to do a lot of damage, but in terms of survivability, the Kinetic Breaker always wins. For my ultimate, I am running the recovery link because it will heal myself, my shield, and my teammates, but most importantly, I'm running it because it heals myself and my shield. 
it takes a really long time for someone to take a shield player out and to pop the recovery link right before you die forces the player to essentially kill you all over again. For talents, I am running on the move because you're going to be moving the entire time with the shield up. Shrapnel, I don't know if shrapnel is actually working, but if you're running a harmful pistol, it doesn't. Uh, if it were to work, it would apply a bleed effect to your targets within 10 meters. And since you will be using lots of med kits, critical save and combat medic is smart to run. I've been using this shield build for about a week doing PvP in the dark zone. A lot of the times, players will not know what to do with you. They start to panic, scatter, and hide when they get triple sentry marked and are bleeding, and it makes them really easy kills. Other times, you will encounter teams that are pretty good at PvP, and one tip I can give to you is to always leave your shield up. If you start to run, you instantly lose all the shield's toughness because you put it away, and you become much squishier than a normal player because you didn't spec as much of the stamina as other players have. Just remember that you can eat enemy grenades, and shock turrets won't do much to you since you can still turn around and block bullets with a shield if it's necessary. Tips for taking down a shield player. The shield player is very slow moving around and being on fire doesn't help because now the shield player cannot shoot. Throwing down incendiary grenades on the ground in front of the player and swarming around them from all angles is a great way to go down him. Uh, another way to counter the shield is to take advantage of the fact that the camera angle sucks. Uh, if you're able to push the fight into an alley or against the wall, the player will have a hard time landing shots because they can't even see you. That's all I have for my Sentry Bulletic Shield build. I hope this video will help you with yours. I will leave the remainder of the video with some clips from my personal experience in a dark zone. Thanks for watching. Yeah. I killed him for you. Hey, guy. No rose. So I got a sniper as well. Just these two right now. You are now entering the contaminated area. Back. Stupid 
Station menu. Uh huh. Marble Hill just killed Venom. Uh, I think it's over. Just certain guns scale poorly and certain guns scale well. In general, though, I do. But 40, I mean, 4800 is where you unlock everything. Yeah. 4790 or whatever. I mean, some people were, I mean, again, the patch I was running 4,000 firearms and the rest of the stamina are being required to screen. Sponsored. Look at this other guy. Everyone's rogue. Right, it's still rogue. Watch your fire. Room. He's right now. For the heal? I do, where are you? I got a heal, I got a heal. 